Bataro here with Kira Bataro. It's a big fight coming up next week at Combate Americas. Welcome to the show, Kira. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm good. I also want to thank all our viewers for tuning in today. First off, Kira, less than a week or so away, close to about a week and a half away, what are your thoughts going into this fight? Uh, going into this fight, it's all, all the fights are the same to me. I'm, I know that this is for the, the main event. This is my first headlining show for Combate. Uh, I am 3-0 and under the banner. I get the belt if I win this fight, when I win this fight. So I'm really excited. But, but um, ever since I've been starting, uh, started training when I was 13 years old, I went into every single match, every single fight, like it was the biggest fight of my life. So I try not to take into consideration so much stress upon me, saying that, oh, I have so much to riding on this fight, being that I am the, the headliner, I am 3-0, and that this could be my first loss. I just take every fight like it's the hardest fight, so I know that I did everything in my power to get to where I needed to be. I hear your animal growling. you got to tell our viewers who that is. <laughs> Pick him up, show him how cute. Oh, and he's as fierce as you are, Kira. Like, trying to get in this shot right now, my bulldogs. So <laughs> funny. I love animals. What kind of fight can the fans expect to see then? Uh, the kind of fight they can expect to see is uh, Combate is really known for finishing fights. Campbell's very... Uh, well at telling the fighters, look, I want finishes, I want a show. And our last combate card was in Mexico City, and every single fight except for one went to a finish. So we had one decision fight, but we had all finishes, and we're here to put on a show. We're sh here to show them that Latinos can bring it, that we want to fight, that we give it everything we got. And so uh, wherever it goes, on the feet, on the ground, against the cage, I'm prepared for everything. I do come from a very strong wrestling and jiu-jitsu background. Mm -hmm. That's where I plan to take the fight. By the way, big shout out to Campbell McLaren. He's done an amazing job with Combate Americas, and uh, he's going to continue to do an amazing job this year as well. How did you get the nickname Mogwai? Or am I pronouncing that wrong? I think I've got that all wrong again. Mogwai. Mogwai, okay. How did yeah, you get that um, nickname? It's from, it's from Gremlins. Uh, I was hanging out with my coach, my very first training camp, uh, as an amateur, and we're sitting in the car, and he looks at me. I don't know, we're driving to Trader Joe's, and he goes, Mogwai or Gizmo? And I, I was like, well, my, my grandma's dog's name is Gizmo, so I guess Mogwai. And he was like, okay, great, because that's your fight name. He's like, you're cute and little, but as soon as those lights hit you, you turn into a little gremlin. Yeah, I like that name. It fits you. We have some video I want to show our viewers of your last fight with Jenny Silverio. Can you break down that fight for us? It was an amazing fight. Yes, uh, Jenny Silverio was a, my toughest opponent to date. Um, besides my my last one, my toughest opponent in combate. And uh, Jenny was a second degree black belt in judo. She was a two straight purple belt in jujitsu. She was coming off a three fight win streak. I knew that she was gonna be a very game opponent. And uh, when I went into that fight, I was a little nervous, uh, just being what a great name she had. And I had Eddie Bravo in my corner. Right. Uh, every time I have Eddie in my corner, I have something to prove. Eddie's believed in me since I was 13, but he has such a, a great name in the sport. And uh, so to have Eddie Bravo in my corner, uh, Casey Halstead, Phil Baroni, I had all these high level, high names. And I knew I had to do something great saying, these are my trainers, this is why I'm the best. And uh, I, I took her down uh, in the first round. I ended up on my back in a scramble and I'd never been on my back before in all of my MMA fights through my amateur career, through my pro career. So that definitely threw me off. Uh, in the second round, I knew that I had better striking than her. So I came out real heavy handed uh, and then she threw me with a, a head and arm. And so I was freaking out with the head and arm being that I wasn't thrown before either. I took her back right away and I got her in, in my go-to, my head, uh, my twister. So I had her in a twister and I heard Eddie saying, finish the twister, finish it. And being that he's the one that created the twister, I was like, oh, I can totally finish this. But then like the adrenaline just kept going and I was like, I could get the TKO right now. So I had her arm trapped and I just said, punch, punch, punch. And I heard her being kept saying, you gotta protect yourself, you gotta protect yourself. A good 40 punches later, finally called it. But 
it was it was one of those TKOs where I knew she was not going to go anywhere, and that fight was mine. So, Kira, I know the fight is just about a week and a half away, but have you thought ahead as to who you might want to fight after this fight? I have. With all the, the Twitter drama, and Facebook wars, and keyboard warriors, uh, I know that Stephanie and Paulina are, are calling me out. Uh, the thing about Paulina, she is 2-0 under the banner, but she did take a two-year layoff before her two fights with Combate. The two fights that she had with Combate were decisions. Uh, one of the decisions were with Stephanie Alba, who uh, went split decision both times she fought her. So a split decision win isn't, isn't much. And uh, now Stephanie's calling me out too, saying that she's never been finished, that I don't scare her, that she could fight me. And uh, Pauline is out till May. I'm trying to stay active, I'm young, I'm healthy, I want to keep going. I'm not going to wait for her from May. I don't care if she's going to call me out and call me out for a four month later fight. I'm ready now. So uh, I know Campbell wants me on the Mexico City card. If she's not ready, I'm ready to fight Stephanie next in Mexico. I want to finish her, give her her first finished loss. I know all her losses were by decision, so I plan on finishing her and showing Paulina, look, you went split, I'm going to finish her. Before we go today, Kira, I wanted to ask you, you're doing a special event after the weigh-in. Let's talk about that. Uh, my sister's best friend in uh, Portland actually just got diagnosed with leukemia. He's 18 years old, a senior in high school. Real sweet kid. It's just him and his mom. He's helping his mom out with the bills. And uh, so being that he got diagnosed and he he's helping with the bills with his mom, I'm trying to help raise as much money as possible for him. He does have a GoFundMe account, and that link is all over my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter. But I am going to hold my own event to help raise money. Um, his name is Cleon, and we're going to have an event in Burbank right after my weigh-ins. Uh, $5 donations. I had a lot of my sponsors uh, pitch in to help out with it. I have Quest Nutrition that donated, Holy Sheets, Sweet Sweat, uh, Fight Me Clothing. Uh, actually, the guy that does my hair, he even <laughs> offered uh, two, two uh, haircuts with him. Aww. So I have a lot of people donating at the event. All donations are welcome. I want as many people to show up as possible. Uh, it's going to be a great event, $5 for raffles, and I'm hoping that we can make a lot of money to help my, my sister's friend, Cleon. Uh, I am dedicating this fight for him, so any hashtags, it's hashtag support Cleon's fight, and uh, we're trying to raise awareness and raise money for him. What a great cause. I know you're going to win it for him. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Listen up, must love MMA fans. You can catch Combate America's 11 February 16th at the Burbank Event Center. It's televised live on both Azteca America, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, and UFC Fight Pass at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. Kira, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me, and I wish you good luck on your fight. Thank you so much.